If you want to get started with RxJS as quickly as possible, this video is for you. We will get you covered with the most relevant things you need to know about RxJS. Let's go! If you're not sure whether you want to invest the time and effort learning it, I recommend watching this video first. Ok, let's get started. First let's have a look at the Pareto principle. It says that 20% of the effort lead to 80% of the outcome. So let's first concentrate on the things that are most relevant when learning RxJS. From my experience the most relevant things are observables, observers, subscriptions, operators and subjects. And of course we want to learn the concepts about those topics, we don't have to cover them in detail to get started. If you want to follow along with the written version of this video, just have a look at the blog post linked in the description below. Ok, first it makes sense to understand observables, observers and subscriptions. The basic concept is quite simple, you have an observable and you have multiple observers which are linked via a subscription to this observable. An observable has three possible states. The first one is open, then we have completed and we have award. The open state means that the observable can emit values. The completed state means that the observable will not emit any values anymore. And the error state means that an error was emitted and also no value will be emitted anymore by this observable. By default observables are lazy. This means they don't produce values until they have an active subscription. Let's have a look at the first example. In this example we create an observable from scratch. If we create an observable using its constructor, we simply put in a callback that is called every time a subscription comes in. The subscribed observer is passed into this callback and we can call the functions on this observer. The first state of an observable is open. This means we can emit values. And this is what we do in this example. We emit the 42 and afterwards we directly complete. This means we won't emit any values anymore. There is a quite important distinction between observables. We have cold observables and hot observables. In the first example we have a cold observable. This means it produces values for every subscription. So every time we have an observer subscribing to this observable, we will create new values. The number 42 in this example is created for every subscription. Hot observables on the other hand have a value producer outside of them. To get a better understanding of this, let's have a look at another example. Here we have an observable that subscribes to button clicks on every subscription. So the button click events are forwarded to every single observer. So we only have one event. This makes a hot observable. The main difference is that observers of cold observables will get all values emitted by this observable. Observers subscribed to hot observables on the other hand may miss some values before they subscribe to this observable. Let's have a short look at observers. Observers are simply an implementation of an interface. The next function simply takes values that are emitted by the observable that this observer is subscribed to. They can have an error function that is called if the observable emits an error. The third function is the complete function which can be implemented to listen to completion of the observable. Then we have the subscriptions. A subscription is simply an object representing the subscription state from an observer to an observable. Every subscription has an unsubscribed method that can be called to cancel the subscription. You can also aggregate multiple subscriptions into one single subscription. 
you should have a good understanding of when subscriptions are actually created and when you have to unsubscribe manually. Because there can be memory leaks if you have a lot of subscriptions and you miss to clean them up. Let's get to the fun part, the operators. Operators are what make our XJS so powerful. Let's have another look at our button click example, but written with a few operators. In this example, we have exactly the same observable that we saw in the example before, but it's written in three lines of code. And now imagine we want to count the number of clicks done in 10 seconds. First, we take the events until a timer of 10 seconds fires. Then we simply count every event. My next video will be about operators and how you can learn them efficiently. So hit subscribe if you don't want to miss this. The last topic we want to cover in this video are subjects. Subjects are special in that they are implementing an observable and an observer interface. On contrast to observables, they are multicasting. This means they take in subscriptions, but they subscribe only once to the parent. There are three important subject types that I want to cover today. First, we have the default subject. It simply multicasts values to its observers. Have a look at this example and think about what outputs you would expect. You can pause this video now if you want to think about it before I show you the solution. So here is the solution. The subject emits a value to each subscriber as soon as the value comes in. So first we have one subscriber, then we emit two values, and those are directly forwarded to the subscriber. Then we have another subscription and this second subscriber will be called additionally on the next value that is emitted. Now let's have a look at the behavior subject. The behavior subject is special in that it caches the last value that is emitted. It also has an initial value. So let's have a look at the same example, but this time with the behavior subject. Which values are locked to the console? Okay, here's the solution. The behavior subject has an initial value and as soon as the first subscription comes in, this value is forwarded to the observer. Now we have two more emissions and the last value is again cached. And when the next subscription comes in, this value is directly forwarded to the subscriber. Let's have a look at the replay subject. The replay subject caches as many values as you want and forwards them to the observers as soon as the subscription comes in. So let's have a look at this example. And here's the resolution. On the first subscription, we don't have any cached values. And then we have two emissions and those emissions are cached. When the next subscription comes in, the values are forwarded to this observer. Ongoing, we have the same behavior as with the default subject. With this short overview, you should be able to get running with RxJS. You learn best if you get your hands dirty. So I suggest simply start coding and learn the operators you need on demand. And as an awesome developer, never stop learning. In this sense, have fun learning RxJS and see you in the next video.